Teleportraiture was a project that I did last year and into this year uh, where I did portraits, um, traditional oil portraits from live settings, which is something I've been doing for years and years, um, except that in this case I did them uh, over video chat and I used several different clients. I let them choose which client. Um, and I funded it over Kickstarter with the portraits as um, as rewards. So it was this very kind of like approaching the web in a certain way where you're like um, total layman, but I ended up being the, the authority on how to operate these things as a layman. Um, but, let's see. So this is the first one I did in 2009. Um, I was in a long distance relationship and so I just came up with this idea of like, it's, um, I, I've had the tendency to get people to sit for me when I like them. And so I'd done a portrait of this guy a few years ago, and then we were back together again, and, uh, um, and we were both into David Foster Wallace. And then there's this section in The Infinite Jest where he talks about videophony and how the whole market for videophony collapsed because of vanity. Um, and so I was just really interested in this, like, paying attention to your own face and, and um, not entirely paying attention to the other person's face and, and the awkwardness of this kind of interaction. But at the same time, I really like the idea of painting from it because there are all of these, um, it was just, it, it was more difficult to paint from and that was a challenge and I liked that. And I wanted to integrate this into my regular practice, um, but I didn't really get the opportunity to start. So I did, you know, more of people that I liked. And I tried just doing strangers on video, um, on chat roulette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I did one between a Mac and a PC over Gchat of myself. <laughs> um, so, you know, I had an idea that I could do it. So um, I lost my job uh, and went on unemployment in the middle of 2011. Um, so I finally got to get started on these projects that I've been planning for a while, but I realized also I needed to get money to do it. Um, so I needed a proof of concept. Um, so my friend sat for this one, and I wanted to get two birds with one, one stone, so I, we just talked about the idea of the project, and I would every once in a while go into presentation mode and, and, and talk about it like it was a Kickstarter video. Um, then I had three hours of video, uh, mm -hmm. And I spent a week or two learning Premiere and uh, editing it down. And then I showed her, I sent the whole video to her. Um, and, and she decided that she didn't really want her image online in this way. Um, because she was afraid of being found by people, she didn't feel secure about it, she didn't feel comfortable, so okay. That was one demo, um, which I still uploaded online. She was okay with some of it, and she's okay with me showing you the painting, obviously. Um, luckily, I've done another one. And this is my actual Kickstarter video. Um, luckily, I've done another one. I'm just going to unmute that. Um, so I, I recorded this whole session with Allison in California, and uh, she, unfortunately, the, the recording didn't go perfectly well, and I didn't have any audio, so I ended up just like sticking it in a corner, um, and then quick time videoing myself and making the video. So it was really just le like, what is the way that I can do this that would absolutely be easiest and it worked great because it was also a way of sort of demonstrating my um, my bedside manner, like the kind of person and attitude that they would be confronted with while they were being painted. Um, and I almost ad-libbed a lot of it. I mean, I started with a script and then I wandered off from it um, at the end. But I figured nobody watched it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Although I didn't. I did, I did do some excellent editing, it was 
still images here. Mm. Um, and then <laughs> budgeting. Uh, this is straight from Kevin. And, and that, it was really, he just, he knows how to put a budget together. I mean, I added, I ad, added some things that made more sense for an art project rather than a music project, but this was a huge, huge help in estimating everything. Um, and of course I had to do that thing where I go like, well, this is how much I can get from this person, and this is how much I can get from this person, and I started bugging those people. Um, so it was a very tense couple of months. And I did set it up for two entire months because I, I don't know, I just like wanted a more leisurely promotional schedule. Um, but ultimately I, I, I budgeted for things that are now zeros there because I didn't actually have to spend money on them. I just wanted to, you know, pretend that that's what that was paying for. Um, although it really got down to the bottom line and, um, yeah. The problem I had was that I underpriced myself severely. I added too many different rewards and um, things that people didn't really want that took like tons of my time to do. And I was offering to paint people. I was offering to like do the, all of the work, but not actually sell them the painting. And that was designed for people um, that I knew already that, that just wanted to um, that I knew couldn't afford to buy a painting. But then I got a lot of people, like, because, because Kickstarter was really nice and they promoted me, um, I got a lot of people giving that, and I felt like I was being ambiguous, and I had to, like, clarify with everybody, you understand that this is what you're actually getting, please, please, actually buy the painting, this is, that's better the way that it works. Um, and I know that it wouldn't have been successful if I hadn't had things priced in that way, where I was thinking about what I would be able to afford. Um, but the problem with that is if you keep if you keep pricing what you're able to afford and asking for that amount of money, then that you know lowers the amount that you can imagine yourself affording. Um, so if I'd done this again, I would have actually priced things the way paintings are supposed to be priced, which is in the four digits. Um, There's another demo, which I think came out really, really well, and that became like the main um, image of the, of the project. And this, this was very much sort of the popular image of it, because it's full on its face, but then her eyes are sort of occluded. Um, and it's also this awkward like looking into the camera, but not looking straight into the camera thing. You can never make eye contact. Um, then I did another one. Uh, I owed Casey a painting of him because I lost the one that I did in person on a train. <laughs> so um, we, I, I, I did another demo, and this time I invited people to sit in on the demo. Um, Twelve minutes left. Okay. Uh, and that was interesting. I was trying to create kind of a salon atmosphere and getting other people to entertain my subject while he was there. Um, and that was part of the, um, part of the project that I, I integrated it into the reward structure to say, well, you can sit in on as many as you want, or three of them. And this really wasn't something that I should have integrated into it. For one thing, it demanded that I use a platform, I use a client that um, allowed multiple people to come in and allowed them to all be sidelined and, and me to keep one central person. The only thing that did this at the time was Google Hangouts. Um, there were other ones, but there was, you know, they always divided it into multiples or they charged, and almost everything required membership, which bothered me. Um, I didn't really like think we couldn't do this anonymously. But there was a thing where I could do it anonymously, which is on my site now, but it was really low resolution at the time, and I couldn't change that. It was just part of the stream. It was called Talkbox. Um, yeah, nobody cares about that. So, bam, I reached the goal like less than halfway through the time. 
but I'd set the goal really, really low. <laughs> like the, the goal was um, 5,000. What I really needed was 7,000 at least. And um, so, you know, once you've hit your goal, you can't like keep saying, oh no, you have to give, you have to. And I'm like, but we reached your goal. I'm like, no, that's not the real goal. <laughs> that was just so I would get it. Um, and so that it kind of changes the mode of the entire thing. I also ran out of the $50 reward, which I'm glad about because that's 20 paintings that I had to do that were not sold. Okay, so anyway, I've made about 2,000 more. So I did make it to 7,000. The Kickstarter took like 1,000. Um, and then I had to kind of squeeze that money around. Um, I started getting requests from people that I hadn't really thought about or prepared for, like commissioning portraits of other people. And of course I would have to go and contact those other people and schedule with them. Or like, oh, can you get my three kids in? No, because they're kids and they won't sit still. And there are three people and they won't fit in the frame. And can't you just be vain and have a portrait of yourself, please? Um, like, it's a portrait of, of, of the interaction, it's a portrait of the time, it's not necessarily a, a narcissistic thing to do, but everyone's afraid of being narcissistic at the same time that they totally are and are very self-conscious and aware. Anyway, um, this is my friend Matt, he's like one of my, he's like, he's my biggest fan, probably literally as well as figuratively. Um, <laughs> And so uh, I was comfortable with him, and like that was I know him through the ex-boyfriend that was the first one that I did. So he was my first, uh, he was the first man, and, and we started like working out the case. And he was a very good host. Like he sat in on a lot of them, and he would come in there and entertain people, and that, that worked really well. With the accordion. Yes. Oh, yes. There's this beginning theme of, uh, uh, oh, I want my instrument with me. Um, and also a tiny pony. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the all important, uh, your number one client, mom. mom. <laughs> um, I changed that, that forehead a little bit. But you can actually kind of see the different textures that different clients have. Um, like iChat, which is what I did this over as a has better colors, but it's also kind of fuzzy. Um, and this is my mom's friend, and here's my sister. And then this was weird because this was like a distant relative's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna rapidly go through here because uh, because there are a lot of these because I ultimately ended up doing 45 of them. <laughs> so 40. 45 paintings for $6,000. Um, I, I, I'm really trying to charge appropriate amounts now. How long does one take? Three hours. So, I do work unusually fast. I'm going to say it. It's really yes. <laughs> Thank you for, for recognizing yeah. that that is a I can't very draw in black and white yeah. in, in ten times that time. Last two hours if you don't have your power adapter. Well, yours power. yours ran out in an hour and a half. Right. <laughs> because when I said sunlight, you were thinking direct sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> and then I met some really amazing people through this. Like Lindsay's, I I don't know how she found me, but I'm lucky she found me. And then this was somebody I was telling. Um, I was saying, oh, we should do this for a really, really long time because he lived in Australia and we never really saw each other anymore. Um, no. So this is actually, I had um, one of the smaller backers staying with me uh, while, I, while I painted this portrait of uh, other Josh. And... Uh, and so she actually captured 
you know, how I was working. Um, I had this little corner set up, you know, like three ways, like the, like the you know, the easel is here, and then making sure that they can see the painting as I'm working at it, and me. Um, and it was interesting to have somebody watching too, because uh, previously all I really had in the room was the cat, so we would talk about the cat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's just, just tons and tons of mundane conversations. And the conversation gets more mundane the more people you add. So that, 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 that like, bonus of, of you can sit in on something, it got really boring when people sat in, <laughs> because nobody really knew each other. Nobody, you know, there, this wasn't really a community. Um, Sometimes, sometimes people already knew each other and they would sit in for a couple minutes. Uh, but for the most part, people were like, well, I don't really you know, want to talk to these people. I don't know them. Well, I'm like, forced pull to pull a Bob Ross and like, talk about what you're painting. I do, I do. I think, I think <laughs> that's part of the appeal. Happy is, little trees. Happy is, trees. Is that I'll comment on it as I'm going. Um, let me see if I can. So there is this kind of like demo feel throughout the whole thing. And that, I think, is the value of working live rather than working for photos. Everyone assumes that you work from a photo now, but it's a completely different feel. I can't even work from video because I'm not looking at it the same way. I'm not having the same feedback. And that's, that's really what this is about, is like this live internet thing that's possible. It's, it's all about kind of building an intimate relationship. Which is interesting because it feels kind of, sometimes it's almost sex worky, especially considering that, um, you know, the, the use of live video cams online has primarily been voyeuristic and exhibitionist. And in this, I'm turning it around like they're paying me for me to watch them. <laughs> um, so that's how that one came out. And then later on the same day, I did this one, and uh, Maddie is the only uh, client who, uh, not client, she's a, she was my muse, um, who used this green screen thing that you can do, um, so that she's a hologram on the moon, and you have these, <laughs> uh, these little parts where the green screen doesn't really work, and it's bringing you to the background. Oh, so that's the earth, not like she bandaged her ear like Van Gogh? Yeah, no, okay. that's, that's iChat's um, toys, okay. which Google Hangout later integrated, but nobody really used those. Um, learning how to use technology with ants. Ants? Ants? Uh, relatives in Brazil. Now this is where I tried to paint a baby who was a very, very active baby. And um, we both got very, very frustrated and uh, I took some screenshots and I worked from the screenshots. Um, you know, there's a certain point where I have to do that. I tried not to, but I always took them and I always worked from them later. Yeah. Um, before or, or outside of the teleportrait trip, do you, is that the kind of paintings that you do? Do you do portraitures outside of this? Yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it's the thing that I have done no matter what for 15 years. So I'm just wondering, like, what about, like, do you miss painting the rest of the body? Or, do, or is that... Well, I'm always framing it somehow. Yeah. It's much faster to do just a head. Right. Um, and I do miss bodies. After I finished this, it was like I'd completely forgotten how to do bodies. Uh -huh. um, but the face is in someone's sort of yeah, uh, faciality is an interesting thing for me. <laughs> oh, awesome physicists talking about physics with ladies from foreign lands. Uh, Rob actually uh, went on to do a much more successful Kickstarter that was much, much better planned, um, called the Urban Tarot, that he's working on right now. So he kind of 
learned lessons from me, but also just is smarter and better at this. So that's a good thing to watch. He's actually flying out to Hawaii um, to have someone pose for a tarot card for him. Poor, poor bastard. <laughs> Um, and this was a family commission that actually worked. Um, the guy on the right commissioned me to paint both of them for his parents. I need a Yay! Oh, look, there's, there's Josh. <laughs> that was mostly from screenshots. This is one where I'm in the background working, so he's in the same room with me. <laughs> which was Josh's idea. Um, just like clever recursion. And this guy designs zombie video games and does a full, like he's almost a Kickstarter professional too. Um, and I met him in London before I even uh, started doing the paintings. Um, I learned a lot about difficult clients and following difficult clients' instructions very carefully from this one. And then finally I tried to do the whole family thing. And none of these people actually paid me any money. This was like the niece of the woman who commissioned it. And it was it was just weird. <laughs> um, so so yeah, it looks so awkward. It's like so American Gothic awkward. Then I worked on this thing, um, which was an Indiegogo project where I got artists to reproduce um, each other's work from from verbal, from verbal descriptions alone. I designed these books, did all of that. It's, it was, I, I did everything, like, I mean, I learned a lot from people. I would always be asking people for help and the internet for help. But, and then um, finally in May, I had a show. So, <laughs> there was a long delay after the, um, <laughs> And then I did more from the show. <laughs> and then I'm going to try and do these tonight. <laughs> we'll see. And I think I'm going to try and open a gallery. That's the next project. It'll take a while. Um, OK. So I have two minutes for questions, I think. No, we're, we're two minutes over, <laughs> Oh, okay. actually. Sorry. We need to move on, otherwise we're going to run into the other to the other stuff. Yeah, I totally planned for like an hour to talk. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. don't know why I did no, that. No, we're, we're actually way over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yay!